Jamie, this weekend you've got the All Blacks. Is this the biggest single test of your coaching career? Do you feel to date? Well, I've had a few big uh, games, uh, Martin. We obviously played the All Blacks a couple of years ago prior to the World Cup. Um, you know, when we were a new team, and in some ways it feels a bit like that now. Uh, there's a lot of players that are retired or injured, um, and there's a lot of new players coming through in Japan. So uh, exciting for the players, exciting for us as coaches as well. How good is your team? What are we going to see? Uh, I think our team. It suffered really from COVID. We you know, the, the domestic competition was cancelled for a whole year, which then put us behind. And I guess fundamentally, you can't really improve your game, you know, without playing, you know, serious games of footy. Uh, and on top of that, our Sunwolves program is is now gone, so we're a little bit behind the eight ball. So these sorts of games that we're getting now are going to be really good for us in preparation for next year. How do you feel you went against France in the two tests? Lost them both, but the last one was pretty close on the scoreboard, and you racked up twenty three points in the first one. How did you how did you assess those performances? I think when it gets to those T one test matches, what actually happens for us is our attack has always been a point of difference, and uh, you know it's sort of the natural game for the Japanese players. Um, but the size and experience and the intensity of the matches seem to get on top of us. So we'll put ourselves in really good positions to win to win big games of rugby and then fall away in the sort of last 10, 15 minutes. I, I have to say there's not a lot of depth, you know, in our squad uh, compared to the player depth in, in, in New Zealand and Tier 1 countries. Um, so we tend to use the same players for a big part of the match and obviously when you're playing the bigger sides, it's very hard to, to keep that, as I say, that intensity out for the whole 80 minutes. Um, the second test, I thought we were, we were unlucky, really. We... Um, we had a try winning chance off the ball on, you know, when we scored the try in the last sort of three or four minutes, and then we had another one after that. So that was a test match that uh, that went, went begging. Um, and I thought that was a, probably sums up where we are, though. Jamie Joseph, coach of Japan, ahead of the All Blacks test match this coming Saturday night. So, I mean, fitness has never been an issue. Energy's never been an issue. Enthusiasm, dedication, none of those have been an issue. But what you're talking about is, is what I'm gathering here is perhaps just the sheer experience of playing these kind of games, which you're not getting enough of at the moment. Is that fair? Oh, well, yeah, 100%. So, you, you know, if you can compare our system to the New Zealand system, the players come through, they play super rugby, they play... You know, they play international rugby, um, then they go back to international rugby, you know, with the championship, and then they come up to the Northern Hemisphere for the autumn test matches up there. But where, where us, we have a domestic competition, which is, and that's, that's basically dominated by two two or three teams, and the majority of our players come out of those two or three teams. And I guess what that really means is, you know, they, they pretty much only have one, one or two hard games a year now. Part of 2019, we had a Summers program or a Super Rugby team going through, and whilst it was hard to actually win those matches, it really set us up well for the World Cup. Look, the the thing you know, this isn't this isn't a Japan side though. Now, given what you, you know, the team achieved in 2015, also 2019, um, that that should be. I mean, in the boondocks or the back blocks, how do we how do we figure this out, Jamie? How do we get Japan into the Four Nations Championship, for example? How do we how do we get regular games on the schedule for you to actually improve and actually sort of cap, capitalise, I suppose, on the growth? Because everyone looks at Japan and goes, heck, good players are going there now, and they're going there actually in the prime of their careers, be it for sabbaticals or whatever. But obviously it's a burgeoning game. How do, how do you kind of capitalise on that? I think domestically we've got to sort our own, um, our own outfit out first in, in terms of the competition structure. So right now the League One competition, which is a new league, has changed its, uh, its window. So we, we play basically at the same time as Super Rugby, which is which now rules out our players to participate in, in those sorts of competitions. And it's that sort of rugby that the international team needs. Um, so without without getting any sort of uh, outfit sorted out first, it's really hard to actually get that get those matches. So, so what you're really saying is you you know it would be nice to get into the the championship as an example, but coming straight out of out of top league, if you like, it's well, would be a great preparation for for the Japanese team to come out of you know top league into test matches against South Africa, then the next week against Aussie and, and the All Blacks. So, so it's a bit of a hard one, really. Well, what do you then? What do you say to your side then before this game? You 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 obviously don't. I mean, I know that you're just such a winner, and you have that that attitude. You've had it your whole career, your whole life. So it's not like you're going to actually, you know, talk to this bunch of players and say, "Hey, we're the, we're the down and out underdogs here. We've got no chance." I mean, you're going to have to give them everything that they need psychologically to go out there and attack the All Blacks. Yeah, I, 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 I think um, 
I think that's obvious that what, what we need to do really is is, is to compete in, in every part of the game. And, you know, when you're analysing a team to play and you, you analyse the All Blacks, they, they do so, they do a lot of variation, you know, and, and so we've become very focused just on what we want to achieve in the game. The big thing for us really is, you know, this week is the All Blacks, next week we play England at Twickenham and the week after we play France in France. So, and that's the first time as well. You know, when Japan, you know, when I first got here, we used to get one team match a year and now we're getting sort of five. And so, so whilst it's, you know, it's a pretty scary prospect for a team to go out and play five tier one test matches. It's exactly what we need um, in, in preparation for next year, and it's exactly what we need for our players to get better. Jamie, do you look at the All Blacks and think that they're vulnerable given the results this year, or where do you assess where they're at at the moment? Uh, I look at the All Blacks and, and feel for them a little bit because they've gone through some hard times. You know, uh, a lot of scrutiny put on that team uh, and, and the coaching team and the players. Uh, they seem to um, come out of that. You know, they've, they've, I think they're on the on the up now. Um, they've obviously got new coaches. That takes a bit of time. Um, takes time. It takes a lot of time to build to build a team. Um, so I think they're on the up. I think you, you're going to know a lot more by the end of the, the autumn series in, in Europe. Um, and when they get their top team together, you know, they're, they're one of the most experienced sides in the um, in the world. But I guess they're a wee bit like us. We've got some experienced players too, but we've got to actually rebuild and develop and bring some new players through. You know, otherwise we, we're going to go backwards quickly. So that, that's probably my my simple assessment of the All Blacks. When you're watching those test matches and you're you're looking at the ways that teams upset our play, stopped our rhythm, disrupted us, made us, you know, forced us into a team that was looking a little headless and rudderless at times, making a lot of errors and that. How do you how do you how do you affect that on the field? You know, sort of what I'm I suppose I'm getting at is not giving the All Blacks the confidence right from the off. Yeah, I think if you know, I think what we what we know the All Blacks is that under pressure they're you know they're a really good rugby team, and what we've seen this year is under pressure. You know, they're failed to find that form. So I guess what our job is to try and create situations where we can put them under pressure. Um, and that's not that's easier said than done. And we've got a little bit of a plan on how to do that. Um, and these are all cliches, but it's, it's the simplicity of the game, really. You know, the All Blacks have got a strong set piece. Um, I, I guess that's, they haven't played for a couple of weeks, so they'll be fresh. Uh, they need a big game in preparation for them. So I, I think they'll, you know, attack us and try and control the game by their set piece because that's what they do against the best teams in the world. So, um, so that's going to be our first challenge. Yeah, you know what I mean? So we've, we've got we've got a young pack. Um, can, and it's and that's going to be difficult. But if we can get we can get some of our own board, then we can create some pressure. But I've obviously got a good coaching team with John Mitchell and, and Brownie. So there's a lot of variation, a lot of innovation on how we think about the game. Um, and if we can take our game and create some pressure on the All Blacks, then then that's that, that's our opportunity to try and win the Test match. Do you look at individual players or the side that's going to be selected, or do you look at it more in terms of there's 15 on the field in black jerseys, there's eight on the bench, they're all good players, they're all test players, we know what to expect. It doesn't matter whether this name or that name's out there. How do you how do you view that? Oh, no, I don't normally look at individual players, man. It's too, it's too, except my own guys. You know, right. There's too much to do with our own guys. So we start focusing on, on individual players in the All Blacks, and we, you tell me where do we start, you know? So yeah. um, everyone's a good rugby player, and all the teams that we're playing against in the next three weeks are, you know, extremely good rugby players because they're, you know, three of the best teams in the world. So getting guys to focus on individuals, I don't think it's the right way to go for us. We're sort of, as I said earlier on, we're very much a, an us focused group. Um, I think that's the best way of getting and creating confidence for our team, and that's sort of worked for us in the past. A couple of quick questions. We'll let you go, and I know you're busy, and we thank you so much for your time, mate. I mean, you know, the All Blacks are facing a similar situation. You know, I know who you've got. You've got England, you've got France, you've got the All Blacks. I mean, going over after Japan to play Wales, Scotland, and England uh, in the UK. This is what you have to face, though, at a World Cup. You have to face a quarter semi and a final as well, you know, uh, back to back to back. So this is why these tours are the ultimate test, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, as I said, you know, that's exactly what we need as a group because. That's what we've been missing for for some time. Um, but look, I know our players are really excited. It's a big test match. It's at the Olympic Stadium. It's sold out. It's sold out, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Brilliant. A, lot of players, Brilliant. a lot of people here looking for the game. And so it's going to be exciting.
Well, look, all the very best of luck to you. And as it, you know, I mean, I'm a New Zealander saying that to another New Zealander. You know where I'm coming from. Um, it's, it must be great to have Mitch and Tony up there as well, mate. Two fantastic rugby boys as well. Thank you very much, mate. Nice talking to you.